Hey guys, it's Hype Train here, this time with another video on Final Fantasy 16. Square Enix recently had an event where they invited certain members of the gaming press to play the game. A lot of gameplay footage has then been uploaded many times to YouTube. I want to take my time in this video to talk about what was in the gameplay footage as there's a lot to talk about. I'll include an article with links to 5 separate gameplay videos with no commentary in the description below. Keep in mind that the gameplay footage is not what's going to be in the final game. The build was built specifically to showcase to the gaming media. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So let's first talk about the storyline of Final Fantasy XVI. To give a quick summary of the overall storyline, Final Fantasy XVI takes place on a world called Lestia, which resembles medieval Europe. There are six nations who have access to magic crystals. Each nation also has a dominant, a human who acts as a host to an icon. An icon is a powerful magical being, with some icons being some of the iconic summons from past Final Fantasy games such as Ifrit. So these six nations are constantly at war with one another. You play as Clive Rossfield, who witnessed his nation get destroyed and goes on a revenge quest to find Ifrit. The storyline itself seems to be darker in tone and has a much more mature direction than past Final Fantasy games. In the new gameplay footage, Clive is with his dog Torgal and his friend Sidolphus Telmon. Sidolphus is a dominant of Rama. They infiltrate a royal Waloder army keep. They are looking for the dominant of Fire, who is rumored to be held captive there. Instead, they encounter Benedicta, the dominant of Guruda. Benedicta and Sidolphus start fighting, but Sidolphus ends up getting injured during the fight. Clive ends up fighting Benedicta's two harpies, Duparna and Chera. And then he ends up fighting Benedicta herself. There is more gameplay footage that shows a section of the game that's later than the fight with Benedicta. Clive and Sid run into a dominant who's responsible for destroying Clive's kingdom. Clive ends up fighting Garuda. And in the later part of the fight, Clive turns into Ifrit and fights Garuda in an icon versus icon battle. Well, let's chat then. Also revealed in the gameplay footage is the active time lore system. This system will allow players to pause the game at any time, even during cutscenes to get information on the history and lore of the world. The writing team at Square Enix has written a history of Valestia that goes back to 1500 years, and there are hundreds of lore entries in the active lore system. This is all optional, but it is there and the lore seems to be very deep for those who want to get deeper into the storyline. The overall production value of Final Fantasy XVI seems to be very good from the new gameplay footage. It looks and feels next-gen, and looks to be a big step up in graphics and presentation compared to past Final Fantasy games. Keeping in line with the more mature tone of this game, the graphics and art style is very dark fancy. The game is a lot darker visually, and does not have as much bright colors. The textures and character models look in line with games like the God of War PS5 games. The game looks smooth frame rate wise and the animations and the feel of the combat looks amazing. So anyone who wants a next gen experience with Final Fantasy 16 will not likely be disappointed. The voice acting and localization is very well done. 
Final Fantasy 16 uses a lot of famous English voice actors. Live Rossfield is voiced by Ben Starr. Sidolphus is voiced by Ralph Innocent. Benedicta is voiced by Nina Yindis. All these voice actors have a lot of experience in the field, voice acting in various AAA games such as Assassin's Creed and past Final Fantasy games. The writing and dialogue from the various cutscenes are well done. You would not expect this quality to be in a JRPG. If the game didn't have the Final Fantasy name or the Square Enix brand, you would think that this game is from a Western game company. So Square Enix is looking to push this game to look and feel more like a Western game. And this is to appeal more to the Western gaming market. And I feel this part of the game's presentation is very important if you want mainstream success in the West. And this might be a rare case where I play a JRPG with the English voice acting. The soundtrack is absolutely amazing in the gameplay footage. All the tracks during the battle scenes are insane. It's reminiscent of past soundtracks from older Final Fantasy games, but turned up to 100. The soundtrack is composed by Masayoshi Soken, who worked on a lot of the soundtrack of Final Fantasy XIV. The gameplay in Final Fantasy XVI is going to be very different from past Final Fantasy games. There will be no turn-based combat system at all, and the combat is all action combat. The combat is led by Ryota Suzuki, who was the combat lead of past Devil May Cry games. So the combat is very reminiscent of Devil May Cry. Clive has a lot of fast and stylish attacks, and there's a combo system in this game. There's also a scoring system, where the higher you score, the more XP boost you get. There's no random battles or a party. You instead have AI controlled companions that assist you. You don't have any control over your AI companions, so you can't give out commands. However, you can command your dog Torgo, who can assist you with attacks or heal you. In terms of combat mechanics, there is a dedicated dodge button. There is a fireball ability which is somewhat similar in function to Dante's guns in Devil May Cry. This is a ranged attack that does minimal damage. Also enemies can be staggered like in Final Fantasy VII Remake. You can stagger enemies by emptying their willpower gauge. When that gauge is empty, the enemy gets staggered and takes more damage. Clive has access to three abilities that are on cooldown when used. These abilities differ depending on which icon is equipped. The Phoenix icon has a dash attack move, a sweeping strike that knocks enemies into the air, and a spin attack. The Garuda icon has abilities that can pull enemies to close range. The Titan icon has its own block ability which timed correctly can parry enemy attacks. It also has powerful punches and ground slams that can be charged. For difficulty modes, there will be an action and story mode. The action mode is for veterans of games like Devil May Cry, while story mode is for those who want a more story focused experience or are used to turn based games. In both of these modes, the strength of the enemies will be the same. The only difference is that story mode will give players access to a particular set of strong accessories from the very start of the game. These accessories include the Ring of Timely Focus, which temporarily slows time before enemy attacks connect, providing more time to react and dodge. The Ring of Timely Assistance, which automatically issues commands to your pet dog, Torgo. The Ring of Timely Strikes, which executes combo attacks with just one press of the attack button. The Ring of Timely Evasion, which auto-dodges most attacks. And the Ring of Timely Healing, which automatically uses potions to keep your health popped up. The difficulty does seem a bit easy in the gameplay footage shown, 
but keep in mind that in the footage, a lot of these accessories are used, so it might not represent what gameplay is like in action mode. I really hope this is the case, as I want my games to have gameplay depth, and not just be brainless button mashing. There is a new game plus mode called Final Fantasy. In this mode, enemies will be stronger, have different placements, and there will be full on different battles. One minor complaint about the combat is the damage numbers. The damage numbers are too big and along with the various combat effects seem a bit too much visually. And it does make it hard to tell at times exactly what is going on. Hopefully there's an option to turn off damage numbers or make them smaller. Other new details include that there will be no mini games at all. This is to keep the dark tone of Final Fantasy 16. However, there are side quests and side activities like monster hunts. There will be no load times in this game since it will be taking advantage of the PS5 hardware. The game won't be open world, but has a game structure similar to the PS5 God of War. There is a world map where you can unlock and begin main storyline quests. After beating a quest, Clive returns to a world map and new main quests will unlock. There are also new areas, new side quests, and new side content that can be accessed from this world map as well. There are certain big cinematic storyline battles that are Icon vs Icon. Each Icon battle is a different, unique set piece. For example, one Icon battle resembles a shooter. Shown in the gameplay footage, Clive turns into Ifrit and fights Garuda. The gameplay of this set piece is similar to set pieces in other games where you control a big mech. The movement of Ifrit is slow. You can do a regular attack, a fireball, a lunge, and an evade. The attacks are slow as well but feel very powerful. And the whole set piece is reminiscent of a big kaiju fight in a Godzilla movie. The fight ends with Ifrit doing his bi infamous big hellfire move that's been in past Final Fantasy games. Yoshida, in a recent post on the Japanese PlayStation blog, stated that the PC version is not likely to come in 6 months after the PS5 release and will take a longer time. Square Enix did spend a lot of time and money developing the game for PS5, so they need more time for releasing the PC version. So Final Fantasy 16 is a 6 month limited time exclusive for the PS5, but the PC version will take longer than just 6 months after the PS5 version release. It is unknown exactly when the PC version will release at this point, but it will likely be sometime in 2024. This is a bit of sad news for me, I don't have a PS5, so unfortunately I will have to spend my time waiting for the PC version. Final Fantasy 16 looks to be very different from past Final Fantasy games. I think it's an interesting direction, but it all depends on the execution. The graphics, presentation, and writing of the game looks very good. And once again, I think this is very important as Square Enix wants Final Fantasy 16 to be a must-play title in the West. The gameplay looks very flashy and stylish, but I just hope that there's enough difficulty in gameplay depth. So Final Fantasy 16 is set to release for the PS5 on June 22nd, 2023. There is a very interesting interview with Yoshi P where he discusses his thoughts on the term JRPG, and I will have another video discussing my thoughts on his statements. So if you like this video, please click on the like and subscribe button. It also my channel and as we put out more content on JRPGs such as this video. My name is Sightrain, I'm signing out, and I'll see you next time.